Vivi Marcuse, licensed license by the Department of Financial Institutions and MLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504. Florida, LO76508. Georgia, 69178. Idaho, Nevada, 57237. Oregon, Tennessee, 184373. Texas, Washington, MLO237926. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. Hello and welcome to Mortgage Mom Radio. I am Debbie Marcou and I am the Mortgage Mom. And every week I bring you this show. I typically do it live on YouTube on Mondays and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific time. If you'd like to be involved, you want to be part of the show, you want to be able to watch, you want to ask questions, all you need to do is text the word MOM to 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. We don't always send you a text message. I promise I won't spam you. We, I will send you one text message a week, and that way you know to go ahead and jump on and watch us live. But very many times, we do do two shows per week. So if you do want to check us out all the time, you never want to miss out, then go to my YouTube channel. Look for Mortgage Mom Radio on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel and click that notification bell to all so that you do know when we go live. Today's show is going to be all about equity lines and equity loans, and I know that we've recently talked about this. As a matter of fact, I have a current um, commercial running that talks about an equity line and an equity loan. So we're going to talk about those. And the reason that we are is that there's also some pieces of the information that you do need to know, things that you need to remember. If you haven't been a homeowner since prior to 2000, uh, you might not realize what can happen with equity lines and with equity loans or where we see you know, many problems with equity lines and equity loans. So can they be very good? Yes, they can. Can they benefit you as far as keeping your current interest rate in place, not having to do a refinance and removing, you know, that super low interest rate for a higher rate when trying to pull out some cash for debt consolidation or for home improvement. Yes, equity lines and equity loans definitely have their place and they are a fantastic product, but they can also get you into trouble. So we are going to talk today about everything equity line and equity loan. In the meantime, we're going to take a super fast break, but I do want you guys to uh, give us a call, talk to us, get on the phone calendar, uh, talk with one of the girls that are answering the calls right now. Talk to us about what your scenario is and what your situation is and ask us your questions. It's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. That's W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. So with that, hold tight. We'll be back with everything about equity lines and equity, equity loans in just a minute. Hi, this is Debbie Marcoux, host of the Mortgage Mom Radio Show. Well, I'm here to talk to you all about our next upcoming homebuyer workshop. It's going to be on Sunday, August the 14th at 1 p.m. This is so awesome and it is going to be so much fun. We are going to be serving wine, beer, appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, um, coffee, tea, whatever it is that you like to drink, but we want it to be a nice relaxing afternoon, lots of fun. We're going to be playing games. We're going to have giveaways. We want to make this an interactive experience and one that you will enjoy. You will have fun. You may even walk away with a free appraisal for your transaction, but it is a home buyer workshop where we are going to teach you everything that you need to know about buying a home, beginning from the start at A, what do these words mean, to all the way to the end. I'm in escrow, what do I do now? And signing that final closing disclosure. We want to make sure that it is a fantastic day with lots of information. We are going to keep that crowd small. We have 30 total seats and we've already got some of those tickets sold. So if you'd like to come, please don't hesitate. Text the word RSVP to 844-935-3634. That's 844 844- we lend for you. W E L E N D and the number four. Text RSVP. You will get the link to go ahead and check out our Eventbrite, get your tickets, and we cannot wait to see you. That's Sunday, August the 14th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see you all there. Bye bye. 
All right, so welcome back to Mortgage Mom Radio. I am Debbie Marcoux, and I am the Mortgage Mom, and today we are talking everything about equity lines and equity loans. We're going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I have actually seen a good amount of people uh, end up in a bad situation from the equity lines and loans, yet I've also seen many people do really great, really fantastic with them. So I do think it's a very good topic to do right now today, especially considering that if you have purchased a home or refinanced over the last couple of years, your interest rate is definitely better on your current mortgage than what it would be if we did a refinance to pull cash out. Now, mind you, this is not a show for you if you're thinking about a purchase. Uh, Purchases, obviously, you're going to get the prevailing interest rate. This is not a show for you if you're thinking about um, getting a first mortgage. So if you own a home right now that is free and clear and you've been thinking about getting some cash out of the property, that again is going to be considered a first mortgage. So doing an equity line or an equity loan is one that you would do if you were going to be looking to get cash out of your home for one particular reason or another. What are some of the reasons that people take cash out of their home? So I mentioned it a little bit earlier, right when the show started. So some people want to debt consolidate. Other people want to do some home improvement, but it really doesn't stop there. There's many, many reasons, numerous reasons why someone might want to try to get cash out of their home. For example, rather than putting your kid through college through student loans, maybe you want to get that money from your property. Maybe you have an IRS debt that you need to pay back or that you owe that you want to get taken care of. Yes, that could be very similar to debt consolidation, but not necessarily the same thing. Here's a big one, ding, 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 not a lot of fun, but if you're going through a divorce and you need to buy out the co-borrower, the co-owner, your spouse, you need to buy them out in order to keep the property, you're going to need to do a refinance or you're going to need to somehow get some cash out of your home. And so equity lines and equity loans are there in a situation where you might possibly not want to touch the current mortgage that you have today. Why might you not want to touch it? Well, the math doesn't lie. When we do math, it doesn't lie. We want to make sure that we're obviously getting you into the very lowest all around payments and interest owed uh, for everything that you owe in life, right? So if you have a mortgage that is $500,000 and your interest rate is 3% and you need to take $100,000, well, it may not make sense to refinance the entire $600,000 at a higher interest rate when you've got such a large balance already tied up at that lower rate. However, there are things that can come into play that maybe it does make more sense to do it that way. You know, if you're looking for something that's long term, you want a 30 year fixed payment, you don't want your payments to go up, you are worried about interest rates increasing. These are all of the things, the good, the bad, and the ugly that we're going to talk about with the equity lines and the equity loans for you to be aware of. So yes, we wanna make you make sure that you are paying the least amount of interest that is at all possible between a first mortgage, uh, an equity line, or a second mortgage, an equity loan, or even all of your other debts, your credit cards, and your car loans, and your student loans, and your IRS debts, right? That That's okay. We're going to look at all of that to try to figure out what is the least expensive way, the least amount of interest that you can possibly pay on the debt owed or the debt borrowed. However, um, you do need to also look at what the reason for the cash out is. How long do you expect to hold that balance outstanding? These are really important things that go into factors of what kind of financing should I take to get that cash out of my home. I do want to remind everybody that you guys can give us a call anytime right now during the show. You can talk with me or one of the girls on my team to discuss your personal situation, your scenario. What is it that you're looking for the cash for? How much do you need? What do you owe today? And what is the current interest rate on your mortgage balance? We're doing free consultations to make sure that you get that information, something you can then sit down and mull over and ultimately you make the decision what is the best direction, the best step forward for you and your family. But if you want that free consultation, you got to call the office. So it's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. That's W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. You can also go to our website, go to mortgagemomradio.com and there are all kinds of tools that you can do on there um, that you can utilize. There are contact us forms, 
really cool, the website. I love it. You can also get our phone app. The phone app is really great. There's tons of tools on that as well. Calculators, uh, watching YouTube, watching the YouTube channel, watching the podcast, listening to the podcast. If you're more of a listener rather than a watcher, you can apply for your loan. You could do all kinds of things on the phone app that you can also do on the website. And the way to get the phone app is to text the same phone number that you call. So it's 844 935 Three six three four. That's eight four four. We lend for you. W e l e n d and the number four. Text the word mom m o m and you will get a response with a uh, link to go ahead and download that phone app. And the phone app does have great tools, but also does the website. So just depends on whether you want to use your computer or whether you'd rather use your phone. But anything that you need, you can call the office, go to the website, use the phone app. Anything that you need, we are here for you and they are free consultations, but I'm going to tell you in order for us to give you that consultation and make sure that we're giving you accurate information, you want to make sure that you do know your current balance on your mortgage, what your current interest rate is. It is very, very helpful for you to have that mortgage statement in front of you so that we do know how much that your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance, if those are impounded, are monthly. We want to know if you've got mortgage insurance. That's very important. If you have other debts that you're hoping to pay off. You want to make sure that you've got access to those, whether it's quickly logging into a phone app on your phone, uh, into one of those accounts, your Capital One, your Citibank, um, you know, vice versa, um, or have those statements uh, there and ready because we, again, we want to be able to give you valuable, true information that you can then uh, mull over and make the decision what is the best direction to move forward for you. So once again, this show is all about home equity lines and loans, the good, the bad, and the ugly, what you definitely need to know. And some of you may decide that an equity line or an equity loan is not for you and that refinancing your property and pulling out the cash, although you may lose that lower interest rate that you currently have might be the best benefit. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to take a super quick break. And when I come back, we're going to keep talking good, bad, and ugly equity lines and equity loans. Stay tuned. All right, so welcome back to Mortgage Mom Radio. I am Debbie Marcu. I am the Mortgage Mom, and today we are talking about equity lines and equity loans, the good, the bad, and the ugly. People that might want to benefit or might want to look into or might feel that an equity line or an equity loan is a good way to go would be somebody that is looking to draw funds out of their home. Maybe they've got a very low interest rate on their current mortgage that they're hoping not to touch, and they're wanting to get the cash out in a different way. So once again, let's kind of go over that and then we're going to start talking about, you know, things that you could see come up as potentially risk, harmful, and things that will work out very well for you. So let's just say, for example, you're thinking about doing some home improvement and you need about $100,000 to do the work that you want. Um, Think about it this way, guys. Just those solar panels can be, you know, upwards of 30, 40, 50,000. If you're looking to renovate your kitchen, that can easily get yourself, you know, into 20, 30, 40,000. So $100,000 to do a renovation on a home, even a condo, is really not outrageous. Uh, Many times you'll see that number be significantly bigger if you need to completely redo floors, roofs, painting, maybe redo the bathrooms, right? But let's just talk about something like $100,000. I think it's a great number for us to discuss. I think it's an easy number to understand. And it's a reference point that in your mind you can think about as I'm talking and in comparison to how much do you owe on your first mortgage today. So for example, 
If you came to me and you said, I'm looking for $100,000 to get cash out. I want to do some home improvements on my house. I really don't want to touch my first mortgage right now. I've got a super low interest rate. I owe 2.875. It's a 30-year fixed and my loan balance is $300,000. I would tell you, okay, so you owe $300,000 at that super low interest rate, but we're going to add $100,000 balance. So in total, you owe about $400,000 and we're going to look at equity lines and we're going to look at equity loans. Let's talk about interest rates and what is the benefit between the two products. In this situation, and I would have to actually do a blended rate calculator. I'm not doing that right now today sitting in um, you know, the, the studio. But if I did a blended rate calculator and I put in 300,000 at 2.875 and 100,000 dollars at, let's call it 9 percent as just an example, okay? I'm not telling you that that's what the interest rate is that you'll get. It's just an example. But let's say we put the 100,000 dollars in at 9 percent. The blended interest rate of those loans might be something like four and a half, maybe five percent. So then we've got to talk about, well, what is that $100,000? How long are you going to have that $100,000 outstanding? So for example, again, let's say you're going to do that home improvement. It's $100,000 that you're looking for to get the cash out of your property. Now, what kind of job do you do? Are you on a fixed income? Is it something that you get the same amount of money every single month at every single pay period? And that is all that you earn. You're on a budget. You have to budget monthly and you have to make sure that whatever the budget is fits within your monthly allowance. Okay, somebody like that is going to want to look at a home equity loan or a mortgage loan, whether whether it's a 30-year fixed or a 15-year fixed or a 20 or a 10, right? We want to look at something that is a fixed rate loan that cannot move. How long are you going to have this balance outstanding? Well, I think that I'm probably going to owe it until I sell the house. Uh, you know, I, I need a loan that's going to get it paid off. I'm obviously not making commissions. I'm not making bonuses. I don't get an influx of additional cash where I'm going to be able to pay off this $100,000 in any quick period of time. This is going to be a long-term loan, just like a mortgage would be. That person, that particular person, number one, I would say, let's look at a home equity loan. Let's look at something that is a fixed interest rate for a certain period of time. Something that every monthly payment, when you make it, it's going to be paying down towards the principal balance. These are very important things to think about. If I put you into an equity line, what is the difference between a home equity loan and a home equity line of credit? So a home equity loan is that you know you need $100,000 to do the work that you want. You take your loan, you get your $100,000, you move on, you have a monthly payment, it's a fixed rate, and you make your payment every month and you get it paid back. A home equity line of credit is very much like a credit card in reference, so very easily to easy to explain it that way. You have a limit against your property, so it is tied to your property, it is a lien just like a loan, but it is a limit that you can go up to that you can spend. So you have $100,000 in available limit. What you spend on that is what you owe. It is an interest only payment. So you are not paying the monthly payment due every month is based on the balance owed that month. Just like your credit card balance, you can use it, pay it back, use it, pay it back, use it, pay it back. So what you owe that month is what your payment is based on. It is interest only, which means that the payment that you make is not paying your balance down whatsoever if you make a minimum monthly payment. Now, if you pay extra, you add a little bit to that payment every month, sure, that's going to help pay that balance down. But the minimum payment owed, which most of us Americans are going to make the minimum monthly payment, but the minimum monthly payment owed is not going to get that, that payment or that balance paid off. So if it's something that you're going to have outstanding for a very long period of time, you're not going to have the means monthly within your budget to make bigger payments to get that balance paid down. Again, that's why I say maybe the loan is a better idea than the line. Now, a line is great if you are using it for something like reserves, emergency fund. You don't plan to use it. You just want to have it. You want it open. What if, oh my goodness, a tree falls on the house and now you need to get a new roof and something that you weren't expecting. You have a pipe break. Now you've got to do some work. 
the, it's a really good emergency plan. So number one, a home equity line is great for that. Number two, a home equity line of credit is really, really good for something that's going to be a very short period of time of an outstanding balance, very, very short period of time. So maybe you have something that you're wanting to invest in. You know it's a quick flip. Many of you guys buy property, you turn them over, you do a bunch of rehab work, then you sell the property and you make your income. So in that situation, an equity line of credit would be a great way to fund your investment, something that is going to be a quick flip and paid off very quickly. Uh, a home equity line would be really good for uh, somebody that does make bonuses and commission. And maybe you have a salary that's set every month, but quarterly you get this really big influx of cash. So a an equity line of credit for you would be cool because you can use it and then you can pay it back. You can use it and then you can pay it back. You can use it and then you can pay it back. And if interest rates go up substantially, then you can pay it back whenever you want, not worried about the amount of money sitting on that line of credit at that higher interest rate. So that brings me to what is the difference between an equity loan and an equity line? How do the interest rates change and you know wh what is better, right? Well, again, it's gonna depend on you. What situation is better for you? What situation are you in? So number one, an equity line of credit is tied to the Federal Reserve Prime Rate. It is not tied to anything else. Federal Reserve prime rate, as we have all heard now for the last couple of years, the Federal Reserve is changing the rate. They're increasing it. They first came out at the end of last year of 2021, and they said, we're going to increase the interest rate every six weeks for half of a percent starting in 2022. Well, they started, and they actually only increased the rate by a quarter percent. We were cheering. We're like, yes, quarter, you know, quarter percent, that's awesome. It's not going to be as bad as what we think. And then the next one came that should have been a half a percent, and it was three quarters of a percent. Now, the next one that comes, it's supposed to be a half of a percent, and we're expecting that announcement July 27th. So if you're listening by radio and this show is behind, realize that um, that announcement's already out. So if you don't believe me, go and check it out and go see what is going on, what is happening. But um, we are expecting, they are talking that instead of the half of a percent interest rate, that they're going to do a 1% interest rate hike. Every time the Federal Reserve increases the prime rate, the home equity lines of credit go up exactly the same amount. You will see your monthly payment adjust. You will see the interest that you owe on the balance that you owe adjust. You will owe more. Your monthly payment will go up and you will not be paying any balance down if you're making a minimum payment. So again, equity lines are great for short-term financing, somebody that has the ability to pay it off very quickly because we do expect to see these interest rates continue to go up moving forward. We do think that in 2023, interest rates are going to be higher than where we end 2022. 2024, that's a little far off, not quite sure, you know, not really know what's going to go on there. But one thing that I can tell you is that cycles repeat themselves. And most cycles are seven to 10 year cycles. That is usually what we see. Now this time, things actually went a lot longer. We have a recession that started in 07, really started to recover in 09. And by 2019, 10 years, we were almost at a pandemic. Uh, 2020, we're in the pandemic. So things did go farther, longer than what our typical average seven to 10 year cycles are. But if we are in a seven to 10 year cycle and this cycle started with the prices and the rates increasing in 2021, getting worse here in 2022, then I'm going to expect that we're not going to see the super, super, super du duper low interest rates that we saw in 2020 and in 2021, again, for quite some time. So we do want to anticipate that interest rates are going to continue to go up. The Federal Reserve prime rate is going to continue to go up. And the interest rate that you sign on the paperwork for a home equity line of credit will be at a higher interest rate every six weeks moving forward. So don't get into this line of credit going, I can afford the payment today, barely, but I can afford it if you're not going to be able to afford it, if it's going to continue to go up, because it will. 
Your credit cards are going to continue to do the same thing, guys. Credit cards are tied to the Federal Reserve Prime Rate. So if you have credit card balances currently and you look at your interest rates and you see 24, 25, 26%, don't be surprised when you see 30%, 32% um, in the coming years. So definitely if you have debt, we need to talk about how we get rid of that debt. And that takes us back to the equity loan. So an equity line is adjustable. That's what we said. Payment monthly does not pay your balance down unless you add more. It's really a great tool for somebody that's going to use it for more of a shorter term financing option. And it is usually only open for 10 years. So you typically have a draw period, or if you think about it as a credit card, you have an open line of credit for 10 years that you can use it, pay it, use it, pay it, use it, pay it. At the end of the 10 years, then two things happen and it depends on the bank and it depends on the lender. Number one, you have to actually pay it off. You have a balloon payment that is due and you have to pay it off. And if you don't pay it off, yes, guys, they will put you into foreclosure. And that is the bad and that is the ugly that we'll talk about as we continue to move through the show. Um, number two, some banks do offer that it will roll into a new 20-year loan so that you can get whatever the balance is at the end of the 10-year term, get it paid off. I have been seen more times than not that there is a balloon and there is not an option of a rollover into a loan. So definitely something that if you're thinking about a line of credit that you want to question, you want to ask, and you want to know what happens in 10 years from now. Trust me, 10 years goes so fast. You would not believe it. You'd think that that's a long time and it it really isn't. So you want to make sure that you um, know what's going to happen at the end of that term so that you are making the right decision. Now back to the loan. Um, a loan, what, what are the terms on those loans? So the terms are definitely going to be a higher interest rate than a line of credit. It will be a fixed rate, so you don't have to worry that it is going to change moving forward with the Federal Reserve prime rate hikes. It will actually stay whatever you sign on the dotted line is what you will continue to pay until your balance is paid off. So very, very similar to a mortgage. Now, where is it different? Number one, the interest rate on a home equity loan will be significantly higher than the interest rate on a mortgage, on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Remember that the shorter that your mortgage the lower the interest rate. So if you're looking at a 15 year fixed, you will get a better interest rate than a 30 year fixed. And you know, that goes for everything in between. A 10 year might be, is gonna be a little bit better than a 15. And you know, a 20 is gonna be a little bit better than a 30. So the longer um, that you have a mortgage, the interest rate will be at a little bit higher, but when you're in first position, it's a lot less risky to a lender. They have the opportunity a little bit more easily and more availability to actually foreclose on you. So you are going to get a better interest rate on a first mortgage than you will on a home equity loan. You are in second position. There is more risk to the lender. It is harder for them to foreclose and get their money back when you don't pay. So, uh, but it is a fixed rate. The monthly payment won't change and you are setting yourself up for a payment that will continue to, to remain throughout the entire course of the loan. So again, you've got to decide who are you? How long are you going to have this balance outstanding? Are you doing those home improvements for $100,000? And is it gonna be something that you will pay back over time? Then we really need to look at a home equity loan versus a home equity line of credit. Now, why would I possibly suggest not doing a home equity loan over just a complete true refinance? Pull out some cash, get the money you need, redo your mortgage entirely. What would be a position or what would be a situation in which I would maybe suggest that over an equity line or an equity loan? So over an equity loan, and we'll go there first, equity lines, again, I truly feel are emergency funds. They're great for short-term investments, quick flips, quick payoffs, borrow it, pay it, borrow it, pay it. That's not really... 75% of the people that are listening to the show. The majority of the people that are listening to the show, whether you're watching on YouTube, you're listening by podcast, or you're listening in the car on your favorite radio station, 75% of you are in a, a situation where you have a fixed income. You get paid a salary, you get paid an hourly wage, um, you might make some overtime, but you know, really your income is one in which you need to budget based on what you earn. And you need to know that the monthly payments that you sign up for 
car loans, credit cards, student loans, house payments, and home equity loans are ones that you can afford and you can place within your budget. So why might I say, hey, instead of that equity loan, maybe we really want to focus on just doing a complete refinance. Yeah, 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 I get it. You've got an interest rate of 2.875 on your first mortgage right now. Um, yeah, I know if we do a refinance and we get cash out, you're going to be in an interest rate around six. Oh my gosh, you're going to go up almost double. Why might I suggest that? Overdoing a home equity loan. Well, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a super quick break. And when we get right back, I'm going to keep talking about that. So today is the good, the bad, the dirty, and the ugly, and whatever else that you want to call it about home equity lines and loans. Stay tuned. All right, so welcome back to Mortgage Mom Radio. I'm Debbie Marku, and I am the Mortgage Mom. And today we're talking all things equity lines, equity loans, the good, the bad, and the ugly. What, why might you want to do one? Which one works best for you? Why might you not want to do one? In what situation does it make more sense to do your refinance? So we're talking about all of that today. And one thing I do want to make sure that everybody is listening to and you guys are hearing, because I think it's really important to hear this. If you think that you're waiting to do your refinance for interest rates to go down, stop waiting. We do not anticipate that they are going to go down. You already own your home. You have the the balance that you need. You have the equity that you need out of your property. Property values are at the top of the market, probably the highest that they're going to get. I do think that we're going to start to see things cool off, cool down a bit stabilize. Uh, Appreciation is going to probably slow down. If not, we might even lose a little bit of value in our homes. So waiting for next year when the interest rates are higher doesn't make any sense. Uh, Waiting for next year when your property is not worth as much next year as it is today doesn't make very much sense. No matter what the reason is that you need the money, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to execute. There is no reason to be sitting around and waiting for something that is like likely not to come but let's just say you're one of those believers everybody's out there talking rates are going to come down don't worry rates are going to come down uh number one if they come down we can always do a refinance for you and drop you into that lower interest rate should that happen. So being an owner of a home already with the equity in the property and knowing that you're in a position that you need the cash for whatever that reason might be, there is absolutely no reason to wait. Now, chances of those interest rates coming down, they're dropping, um, is is really very slim. And, and we're not expecting that. We're not anticipating it. As a matter of fact, if I had to give you the mortgage mom's best guess as far as where interest rates will be by the end of 2023, I would say that we're going to probably be looking at interest rates around seven and a half percent, seven and three quarters. That is just my gut. That is my opinion. Uh, I am not a financial analyst. I am not telling you anything that I've read or seen or noted. I'm telling you what I feel that I see is coming based on the almost 30 years that I have been in this business and doing this job. So again, if you guys are thinking about getting money out, you need money out and there's a reason for it, now is the time to call the office, talk to us, get your consultation. It is absolutely free. We are not going to hound you. We are going to talk to you about you, your position, your situation, what it is that you need, why do you 
need it? Are you buying out your co bar or your co owner, your your spouse? You're in the middle of a divorce. Do you own the property with somebody else? You guys bought it together, and now they want to move on, and you want to buy it out from them. You want to keep it. You don't want to leave. You've got to give them the equity that they need out of the property. Do you have some IRS debt? Do you need to finance your kids' college? Uh, do you have just overall debt in general that you'd like to get paid off? Those credit cards, you're starting to feel that pinch. You can feel that the prime rate has gone up and you know it's coming, it's going to go up some more. Whatever that reason might be that you need that money, holding off and waiting and thinking that something's going to get better in 6, 8, 10, 12, 24 months from now is is not a good idea. So definitely call us, talk to us about where we're at right now, today, what do those numbers look like? Is it something that you can budget and you can afford? What direction moving forward is the best budget? And that is where we actually ended prior to the most recent uh, commercial that we did. I said we were talking about that person, why I might recommend doing a complete refinance versus an equity loan if someone has a super low interest rate today and they're looking to take the cash out, why would I say get rid of the low interest rate that you have and get yourself a higher interest rate, if if not double, almost double, right? Why would I recommend that? Why would I tell somebody that that might be their best option or the best way to go? Well, there's a lot of, lot of different variables that go into that kind of a decision and that analyzation. Obviously, like I said at the beginning of this show, math doesn't lie. We need to look at the math. What is going to be our cheapest, most direct route to the budget for the cash you need So we're looking at all aspects, right? So let's just say that you come to me and now that $100,000 that you want for uh, home improvements is now $250,000. So you want $250,000 in cash because you want to renovate this property. It's it's old. It hasn't been updated since the 70s. I mean, you've got to do everything. You need floors. You need you know, paint, you you might even need to repair the windows. It might be time for those double pane. You might need to redo the roof. You want to get some solar panels. It's time for the kitchen and the bathrooms to be done. You're tired of the old pink, you know, pink tiles that are, you know, on the countertops. You might need 250,000. Well, the original uh, example that I gave you guys was somebody that has a mortgage of 300,000. So now if you have a mortgage of 300,000 at an interest rate, of 2.875, which is the estimate or the example that I gave you guys when we first started the show. And now you want 250,000 and you are not somebody that's going to get a big influx of cash. You are not somebody that's going to be able to pay it off quickly. You are going to have this balance sitting there outstanding for a very long period of time. Most of these home equity loans would be based on either a 15 or a 20 year fixed rate. So you want to remember that the shorter the term, the higher the monthly payment. And as I had mentioned, home equity loans will have a higher interest rate than an actual first mortgage will. So if a first mortgage interest rate would be somewhere, let's say, and again, these are all examples. Today, everything is hypothetical, just educating you and giving you the information that you need. So let's say hypothetically, the interest rate on that home equity loan for 250,000 would be 9%. Let's just say. You've got an interest rate on 300,000 at 2.875. So now if we put that blended rate calculator together, the actual interest that you'd be paying on average might be somewhere around six and three quarters, maybe 7%. Your monthly payment is going to be significantly higher because now we're going to do an equity loan over 15 or 20 years versus a mortgage over 30. So depending on your budget, your monthly cash flow, how much can you afford? What is that blended rate look like between a first and a second? How much are you looking to take? So again, everybody is different. If you have a current mortgage right now and you owe $700,000 and your interest rate is 3% and you're only looking for 100,000 to do the home improvements or pay off the student loans or whatever that that might be, that 100,000 at that higher equity loan rate is probably your best decision to move forward. Again, the math doesn't lie. 
but you don't know what the math is and you don't truly know how to calculate it unless you call us. So call us and get your free consultation. What are some of the things that you need to have available when you make that call? Have your mortgage statement in front of you. Have any monthly debts that you might be thinking about paying off that you'd love to debt consolidate. If you have credit cards, grab their statements. If you have student loans, grab the statements. If you know what you, th or you have an idea of how much you think that you're going to have to pay off the, uh, the uh, co-owner of your property to get rid of them. So whether that be in good faith, you just, you and your buddy bought the place together. You guys moved in, you were roommates for a long time. He's getting married, he's ready to go and he's looking to get bought out. You wanna keep the place, you don't wanna move, you love it there, cat's super happy. You need to have an idea of how much money that you need to make him whole, to make him happy. So have an idea of what you think that you need. If you're thinking about doing home improvements, it might be good for you to actually get a contractor out unless you do the work yourself, but to actually get somebody out there or you go off to the Home Depot under the Lowe's and go make yourself a list of what you think that the projects are going to cost you. Have an idea of what you need. If you owe the IRS, get get something, find a statement, figure out what you owe, log in online to the, to the IRS portal, pull up the balance that you owe, have an idea of what you're going to need to get rid of that lien. So whatever that it might be, make sure that you are armed and ready so that we can do that consultation with you so that we can make sure that you are seeing the math, you're seeing the numbers, and you are making the very best decision to move forward in the best way. Again, a refinance might be your best decision. An equity line might be your best decision. An equity loan might be the best decision. So it really depends on you. It depends on your circumstances. We are here to help you and to give you that consultation, to show it to you. We will literally put it into the spreadsheet. We will run the numbers and we will show it to you. At the end of the day, I don't care if you do a mortgage, I don't care if you do a line, and I don't care if you do a loan. Those are personal decisions that you make based on what you feel is right for you and your family. But you cannot make that decision unless you see it, you see the calculations, you know what they are, and you know what the monthly payments would be for the equity line, equity loan, and refinance options. And we can't give you that without you giving us your details first. So make sure you've got those things available when you call. Give us a call at the office. It's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. You can also go to the website, mortgagemomradio.com. We've got an appointment button right there. You can book yourself an appointment for a phone call. You can call the office. And if the if we don't answer immediately, the office will book you an appointment. Appointments are available Monday through Sunday. So I don't care if it's Saturday. I don't care if it's Sunday. I don't care if it's Friday. Uh, book yourself an appointment. We will call you and go through it with you at your convenience on your time schedule. You can always send me an email to questions at mortgagemomradio.com. And that is questions, plural. I'm going to answer those questions for you. I can help you get booked and signed up for a call uh, right through email as well. So there are tons of ways to get a hold of us and we want you to. If you really want to talk to me, Debbie, the mortgage mom, number one, I take calls, I take appointments, and I do consultations. Just send an email to questions at mortgagemomradio.com. Please don't forget the radio. It's mortgage momradio.com. If you're not sure how to spell mortgage, that's okay. Everybody messes it up. Even I do when I'm typing too fast. There is a T in there. It's weird. Uh, look it up on Google and make sure that you're spelling mortgagemomradio.com correctly to make sure that the email does get to me. But email me to questions at mortgagemomradio.com. Let me know you'd love to speak with me. You'd like to get on the calendar on the books for a call with me. Call Monday through Friday. Speak with my assistant that answers the phone. She'll get you either tr transferred over immediately 
or she'll get you on my calendar to talk with me directly. So you can speak with me, but if you want immediate answers, every single girl on my team is amazing. They are all amazing. They they have been in the business for a very long time. They can all answer your questions and there is no need to wait if you if you need to talk to somebody on Saturday or on Sunday or Friday evening. Just call and get yourself um, what you need, get the answers that you need. So again, it's 844 844- Nine three five three six three four. That's eight four four. We lend for you. W e l e n d and the number four. Before we take a break, I do want to make sure that everybody listening to the show, especially my radio listeners on Saturday and Sunday, thank you so much for tuning into the show. And I hope that this is helpful. I know that the show today is all about equity lines, equity loans, and cash out refinances. I understand if you are a first time buyer, you don't own a home, maybe not a first time buyer, but maybe you're ready to jump back into the market again at the end of the day. If you don't own a property, this episode truly is not uh, at you. It's not, it's not for you. It's not giving you information that you need. Uh, However, I hope that it is driving home to you the benefit of homeownership, the equity that you build, the tangible asset that you own, and someone that does need to debt consolidate, pay off student loans, get rid of the IRS, buy out a co-borrower, whatever it is that they may be doing, uh, home improvement to their home, uh, making the property their own and their way with their own touches. That is something that you definitely want to strive for. And I've got tons and tons of uh, home purchase episodes that I have done. So go to YouTube, scroll through my channel, Mortgage Mom Radio, check out the podcast, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, iTunes, Google, Apple Play, um, or Google Store, you know, wherever it is that you like to listen, uh, tune in, I think is one of them, Spotify. Um, But wherever you like to listen to podcasts, look me up, MortgageMomRadio.com. You can go back to those episodes for the buyers. Tons and tons of information that we're bringing you guys every single week. This is very important to me. I want to earn your business. I want to do it through education. I want to make sure that you're getting what you need, the information that you need, and we want you to continue to follow along with us for years to come. So with that, we're going to go to a super quick break. And when we get right back, I'm going to start talking a little bit about the ugly. What can happen if you don't make your payments on those equity lines, equity loans? What happens when you file bankruptcy? Do you think that they go away? Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Debbie Marcoux, host of the Mortgage Mom Radio Show. Well, I'm here to talk to you all about our next upcoming homebuyer workshop. It's going to be on Sunday, August the 14th at 1 p.m. This is so awesome and it is going to be so much fun. We are going to be serving wine, beer, appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, um, coffee, tea, whatever it is that you like to drink, but we want it to be a nice relaxing afternoon, lots of fun. We're going to be playing games. We're going to have giveaways. We want to make this an interactive experience and one that you will enjoy. You will have fun. You may even walk away with a free appraisal for your transaction, but it is a home buyer workshop where we are going to teach you everything that you need to know about buying a home, beginning from the start at A, what do these words mean, to all the way to the end. I'm in escrow, what do I do now? And signing that final closing disclosure. We want to make sure that it is a fantastic day with lots of information. We are going to keep that crowd small. We have 30 total seats and we've already got some of those tickets sold. So if you'd like to come, please don't hesitate. Text the word RSVP to 844-935-3634. That's 844 844- We lend for you, W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. Text RSVP. You will get the link to go ahead and check out our Eventbrite, get your tickets, and we cannot wait to see you. That's Sunday, August the 14th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see you all there. Bye-bye. Okay, so welcome back to Mortgage Mom Radio. I'm Debbie Marcoux. I am the Mortgage Mom, and today we are talking equity lines, equity loans, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, If you missed out on any part of this show whatsoever, if you are listening by radio on Saturday or Sunday to your favorite radio station, and you missed out at the beginning of the show, you can always listen again. Go to my YouTube channel, listen to the podcast. You can find the episode. You can listen to the whole thing, start to finish, and you can even forward through, fast forward where you don't, uh, or if you already 
heard it or you missed something or you don't feel like, I don't know, whatever your reason is, but you guys can get every single episode by going to YouTube or podcast and you can re-listen. If I say something while you're on the road and you didn't get to write something down, but you really wanted to follow up, you wanted to ask a question, again, YouTube, you can absolutely do that. Go to my YouTube channel. It is Mortgage Mom Radio. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and click on that notification bell. That way you know when we go live every single time that we go live. If you want to participate, you guys want to be part of the show, you want to ask your questions, you want to see me read them out loud, you want to watch me film it live, you've got to text the word MOM to 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. Text the word mom and you will opt yourself in to get one text message per week. It will have a link to the show so that you can click on the link and watch the show and interact and be part of it. So we would love for you to do that. The more questions that I get, the better. The better that it actually makes the shows that I do because I'm answering real life questions coming right out of the listeners uh, to the show. So I would love for you guys to participate and be part of it. Uh, But I do do more than one show per week week and I don't text you more than once a week. I will not spam you. I absolutely promise you have my word. But if you do want to watch all of the shows or you want to know when they all go live, then you do need to make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you click that notification bell so that that pops up on your phone uh, when you guys are, you know, out and about and all of a sudden you see that uh, the Mortgage Mom is on and is live. So I'd love for you guys to be part of it. I want you to follow along. I hope that the education and the information that I'm giving you is beneficial to you and that you like it. Uh, I'm going to continue to bring you week after week everything. This is live. It is real. It is up to date. It is current. It is current environment. It is exactly what is happening. As I mentioned before, if you are listening by radio on a Saturday or Sunday and I'm talking talking about the fact that the Federal Reserve would be coming out with whether or not they're increasing that prime rate by one full percent. We are supposed to hear about that on the 27th of July. So you might be a couple of days behind, but if you're actually doing it with me live on radio or on YouTube, then you are actually part of the show and you are seeing me do it in real time. So I would love for you guys to be part of that. Uh, Same exact telephone number that you would text mom. That is the same number that you call the office to speak with us at the office and get that consultation, as I had mentioned. Again, it's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. So really super quick, I only have a couple of minutes left before the hour is up, but I do want to talk about the bad and the ugly when it comes to home equity lines and loans. So one of the things that I have noticed, and I've actually noticed it very, very recently, which is funny because really most people ran into problems who had equity lines and equity loans back in, um, 2007, 2008, 2009, even 2010. And why, if we were starting to pull out of the recession during nine and 10, were we starting to see people having issues with the equity lines and equity loans that they had at that time? And why in 2022, am I starting to see these things rear their ugly heads? So a couple of things that you do need to understand, and I did mention a little bit earlier in the show, but an equity line or an equity loan is in a second position. It is a second lien. It is behind the first lien. It is not as easy for a lender to be able to foreclose on you when you don't pay them back. And especially in a situation where property values have dropped. So let's say that your home was worth $200,000. You got a loan for $180,000 and then you got a $20,000 line of credit. That gave you an 80-20. You, I'm sorry, 160 and 40. I'm in the I'm in the studio, forgive me. So you got a 160 loan amount and a forty thousand dollar line of credit or home equity loan. And that is how you bought your house with hundred percent financing. You did a first and second combination. And this is just an example. Many of you guys bought homes, properties went up in value crazy in 05, 06. You took out equity lines of credit, and that's why I'm a little bit scared right now because I'm starting to see this re. And I don't like repeat and it does happen. That's 
just the way that the world turns. But uh, let's go back to where we were. So you were buying a home, zero down payment, 80% first, 20% second. You got in with 100% financing. And then all of the sudden, property values dropped. So in 20, 2009, that $200,000 property might have been worth 140, 120. 150, depended on the pocket that you were in, where you live in the country and what you're, what, what was happening there, you know, with the property values. We didn't fall by one straight percentage all the way across the entire nation. Every single pocket handled things a little bit differently. Some of them dropped more than others. So depending on where you were at, even though your property value dropped, it might have dropped more. But let's just get back to it. Right now, you owe $200,000 on a property that's now worth, let's call it $150,000. But you owe $160,000 on your first mortgage. You lose your job, we're in a recession, we're going through some rough times, and uh, you need to sell. So you're going to short sell your home. And now the second mortgage is not going to get paid back at all. As it is, the first mortgage is going to have to take a loss just to be able to allow you to sell the home, pay off what you owe them. And that's what a short sale is. So you heard what I said, the second mortgage, the second lien did not get paid anything back whatsoever. They had to agree to allow you to sell, but they didn't get paid back. So that did happen. It happened numerous times. But it also happened that people were modifying. They uh, owed more on the home than what it was worth. Interest rates had dropped by the time we got to 2010. They were trying to refinance that mortgage that they had for the 160000 but they had a second mortgage. And when we do loans and we do a first, uh, uh, when I do a mortgage in general, and you have any loans outstanding against the property, I have to account for in your loan to value. So even though you want to refinance the first and the property might have enough value to do that, if you have a second, your combined loan to value is now too high. So we got a lot of people into a position where they they couldn't refinance. They couldn't drop the payment. They were struggling. They needed to do something. And so they called their mortgage companies and they did modifications. They did a loan modification of the first mortgage to drop the payment, sometimes to actually put a balloon payment at the end, defer some of the principal balance that they owed, just trying to get that payment down to a point that they could afford the home, they could stay in the home, and they wouldn't lose their home. Now, many people thought when they made that phone call to their first mortgage lender that that somehow also included the equity line or the equity loan, the second mortgage that they owed. They thought it was being all taken care of at one time. Well, it certainly was not. Those are two separate lenders and two separate mortgage companies. So many people now here in 2022 think that they modified they're going to do a refinance. Now interest rates are a little bit better than what they even were back then in 2010, 2011. And we're going to do this, this refinance and we find that there's a second mortgage tied to the home that hasn't received monthly payments on it in years, literally years. The interest that they owe, the money that they owe is way more than what they had originally taken out. They thought that everything was wrapped into one when they did the modification and it certainly was not. So of this story, I wanna make sure that you guys understand that the equity lines and the equity loans are not gonna go away. Even if property values drop, you're not gonna get out of them unless you do some sort of a short sale. Those balances are gonna stay there and they're going to wait, and they're going to wait, and they're gonna wait until your home finally has the equity that that second mortgage lender can go after you to get that balance. We have a client right now that we're working with who paid off their first mortgage completely. I mean, the guy was static, ecstatic. He owed nothing, paid off that mortgage, zero, free and clear house. He got a notice of trust, uh, notice, uh, notice of default in the mail for an equity line of credit that he had taken out when he originally bought his home back in the early 2000s that has never been taken care of, never been rectified. He had no idea. He had filed bankruptcy, included that second mortgage in his bankruptcy, thought that that meant that it got taken care of. The bankruptcy court actually dismissed the debt, discharged the debt. He thought it was gone. But hey, guess what, guys? When you have a lien against your property, the lien does not go away. The balance doesn't go away and he still owes that balance unless the, the bankruptcy attorney had actually filed paperwork to get the lien removed. 
then you are still subject to that lien. You still owe that money and it's rearing their, it, they're starting to rear their head right now. Everybody has equity. Everybody's got room to collect. So equity lines, equity loans, make sure number one, you're getting into a payment that you can afford. You're getting into the right one, whether it be a loan or a line. And number three, we are actually going through what it is that you need the money for. How long is it going to be outstanding? What is the blended rate calculator telling us between what you owe today and what you're looking for? And is a refinance a better idea than an equity line or equity loan? So be careful of those. They can rear their head. You do owe the money. We do have somebody right now who also has a notice of default. Their 10 years came and went for their equity line, their draw period. And uh, he just thought that they were going to work with them. They were going to help them out. Out. They would give him longer to figure it out and they didn't work with him. They didn't give him longer to work it out, figure it out. It did not turn over to a loan after the draw period was over. It was truly a balloon and now he's got a notice of default and he's scrambling to figure out how to get that balance paid off. So again, pick the right product, the right one for you. If you don't know what that is, call us. Let us work through it with you. We offer all of them. We can refi you. We can equity loan you and we can equity line you. So whatever it is that you need and that you're looking for, we're here to help. But get that free consultation. It's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show and I will be back again next week with all new topics. Talk to y'all real soon. Bye-bye. Debbie Marcuse, licensed by the Department of Financial Institutions and MLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504. Florida, L076508. Georgia, 69178. Idaho, Nevada, 57237. Oregon, Tennessee, 184373. Texas, Washington, MLO 237926. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. <laughs>